Today, in this video, we're going to talk about how to communicate effectively. Communication is very, very important in humankind. In fact, in the animal world, everybody communicates. Amphibians, mammals, insects, everybody communicates. And it's been underrated. But when you sit down and think about issues in marriages, social circles, workplaces, even between kids and their parents, communication is the first thing they will tell you to address. So in this video, I am going to tell you how to communicate effectively. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to my channel. How are you guys doing? My name is Abby Green, popularly known as Boo Boo from Bubu's Boulevard and on this space we help parents and individuals at large find balance in life and we try to do this through helping you with productivity, intentional living, working smart and living happy. I am very sure that by the end of this video you would be convinced that you need to be in our community. Yes, I trust that. So if all this that I have mentioned is your thing, which I think should be your thing, just press the subscribe button and press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I post my videos. I post videos twice a week. So look out for it. Twice a week. Twice. 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 Ever wondered, no matter how much you think you're communicating, somebody has you in their bad books. Be it your boss, your friend, your spouse even, your parents, or a, a random internet typer. You, or a troll can actually have you in their bad books because it's one thing to communicate it's another thing for them to perceive you know in this society everybody is walking on eggshells especially this millennial era or zillennial era everybody is walking on eggshells because there's a way you communicate and somebody is already labeling you or putting you in a box oh he's a narcissist oh she's an angry woman Oh, she's a feminist. Oh, he's a Yoruba demon. Huh? He's an abuser. Everybody has a way of just putting you in a box. No matter how you want to say it, you can't avoid it. Misunderstandings like this start, you know that sometimes is more to do with the person receiving the message than you speaking it. Let me take for an example. I could just say to two people, you go do that stuff and get it done today. The first person who sees me as a good boss would say, ah, oh, she's so assertive. She's so in charge. I like that. She's very proactive. But the other one would say, she's so bossy. She thinks the world revolves around her. You understand what I'm saying? So these two people always have different biases. This one feels I am a good boss. This one says, I am not a good boss. So the way they receive the same message that I spit out is going to be totally different. Get it? So we know we cannot avoid all this. Somebody will always have us in a bad book. So this, I am going to share tips on how to communicate effectively, be it in the public space, be it text messaging or calls. I'm going to show you how to communicate effectively. one look into their eyes if you're in a social gathering or you are talking to someone one-on-one -on -one, it is very important for you to look straight in their eyes and talk to them because if you remove your eyes okay watch me as I'm talking now and I'm looking somewhere else it looks like I'm not sure about what I'm saying get it I'm not sure about what I'm saying I'm not looking at you right now I'm you know talking up and everything but when you look straight to the I want to say when you look straight to the camera, but when you look straight into their eyes, you are giving them that assurance that whatever you're saying is true. So when you look straight into their eyes and talk, they are receiving that and they have that in their memory that, wow, they looked into my eyes and they told me exactly what they needed to tell me. So whenever you're talking to someone, make sure you look straight into their eyes, okay? It gives you that assurance. Get it. Number two, speak their language. I remember one time they told me to do a toast and 
this girl gave me this dose because she was like oh happy you know how to speak you know how to do this you know how to do that and the when i went for the wedding it was her wedding and when i went there i didn't even know about the audience the audience were more of um locals and rural people so the toast i had prepared in my mind i had to deliver that toast like that and i could see that the crowd was not receptive at all because they were just like what is she saying you know i had a very good like i had good joke liners i had some punch lines and everything i was like i'm gonna kill it but the crowd was not receiving it because mama just wanted me to say hey, 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 you know that is what like to ginger the crowd but i was there going like everybody raise up your glass so today we're going to toast to the bride and the groom and all that and all that they don't want to know that so speak their language you cannot go to italy and start speaking french speak their language try make an effort even when you're not getting it at least they know you're trying so always make sure that you're speaking in their language don't go to maybe a crowd of teens and start blowing big grammar we don't need that speak their language Three, clear your mind of every bias and every emotion before you speak except the intention is that you show that emotion for instance, what's happening now in today's world about the demise of George, the murder of George Floyd. And if everybody's talking now, you know that everybody wants to put their emotions to it. This is not the time to like remove your emotions and talk circumspectly. Yes, you have to sit down and remove sentiments sometimes when you need to go by facts. But in this era, a lot of lives have been taken people have been hurt so they needed to use their emotions to speak this is a good circumstance where you can use your emotion to speak okay there's a line that says it's not what you say it's how you say it so know that your delivery is very important guard your emotions guard your bias and speak from the heart circumspectly with facts logic and clear thinking okay let's bring this one home number four call not text I used to have this very chronic habit of texting as a teenager and I remember my mom would tell me why can't you just call why are you always texting me call me and tell me what you want to say but I just felt it was a shield for me especially when they tell me to maybe call someone who is older than me a lot older than me I see it as a shield and I want to text instead sometimes text can be out of context it does not convey your emotions it does not come convey your intentions okay the emojis came in but you don't want to be packing emojis when you're sending a text message to an older person so sometimes they lose the message in that text so it's better to call so that they hear the sound of your voice if you're remorseful they know you're remorseful if you're happy they know you're happy if you're sad they know you're sad so this texting thing tone it down a little if it's your girlfriend, your boyfriend, anyone that you're texting, fine. But when it comes to, to people that really, really matter to you, like people you really respect, I suggest that you call rather than text. Now I'm going to shake a lot of people on this table. For five, read your text message and reply. Or mark as unread. It's very rude to read a message and not reply. Even if you are so busy to reply or except the person knows your shadow, it's best to just send them a text. There's always a ready text there to you. could say, I'm in a meeting, I'm busy right now, I'm in church. But please always reply your text messages because people actually take time to send a message to you. You read it, it has a blue tick and you don't even bother replying. Come on, it's very rude. I don't really like to do that. Like, no matter how busy I am, as far as I read, except I don't want to read it. As far as I have read it and there's a blue tick, I am replying you, BRB, be right back. It's very easy. If you have read the message and you're not ready to reply, just mark it as unread, okay? For all my texters, I have this bonus tip for you. This is a trick that I always do so that you can actually play safe in the world of manipulation and, and blackmail. <laughs> when you're texting, I would suggest that you don't text in past like, hello, how are you? Um, what were you doing today? 
then you like you send in bits like that no I would suggest that you send a message in a full block say everything you want to say in a full block then you send that way nobody can edit or take out any message from it or add anything that was not supposed to be there get it get it so that's my extra tip my bonus tip for you guys so i hope you communicate effectively i hope these tips will help you i hope to do another video of how to communicate effectively with your spouse leave a comment in the comment section if you want that kind of video how to effectively communicate with your spouse because you agree with me that is one issue if our counselors are always talking about it stay safe stay happy stay well from me to you, it's XOXO. Bye.